Is Jean-Michel Seri a player capable to play at Old Trafford? Hello everyone and welcome to the What If League. Today we're doing an episode, uh, an experiment, what would happen if Manchester United signed Jean-Michel Seri from Nice. And uh, this transfer I have uh, made um, in, uh, for £35 million. It has been done in the middle of February which means that uh, the player is not going to be eligible to play in the Premier League or in the Champions League. Uh, all he would be able to do is probably to play a couple of games in the FA Cup until the end of the season. But it doesn't matter, I think this would be a good opportunity to see how does he perform afterwards. I'm going to fast forward three years into the future and we'll see how, how does he measure at Old Trafford in his new team. Now I'm going to fast forward until the end of the first season to see what happens with his performance. Here we are, the 2nd of June 2018, and uh, champions in the Premier League are Manchester City, which is not a big surprise. They have accumulated 85 points, which is two more than Manchester United, which means that the Red Devils managed to uh, close the gap significantly um, since, uh, since the start of the experiment, when Manchester City had a very big lead, I think 13 points. Now Chelsea and Tottenham have finished in 3rd and 4th position, uh, respectively, and uh, complete the top 4. If we have a look at Manchester United, Captain is Michael Carrick, key player is Alexis Sanchez, so no big changes there. Just to have a quick look at the tactics screen, we see nothing, uh, nothing uh, too surprising there as well. Seri is in the substitutes, the Ivory Coast midfielder. And if we have a quick look at uh, his screen, we can see that he actually played in the Champions League as well, so they managed to, qualify to register him for the latter stages of the competition. And uh, he managed to record one assist there. Not very good average rating, to be honest. 6.55 is not really impressive. He, uh, he also played three games in the FA Cup with an average rating of 6.95, which is a bit better, I, I guess. Now, in order to see his uh, true impact at, uh, at his new team, I'm going to fast forward three more seasons into the future and we'll be back to analyze what happened. Here we are, now it's the 2nd of June 2021 and uh, we will start with the Premier League. First of all, the season that we already saw, 2017-18, Manchester City were champions. Then in the next year, Manchester United claimed the title with 91 points, just one more than the, their city neighbours, Manchester City. Arsenal and Liverpool completed the top four and apparently Jose Mourinho found uh, the, uh, the right tactics and uh, uh, the right set of players to win the league. In the next year, Manchester United reclaimed the title, so this is uh, a second successive title for them. Our Arsenal, Chelsea and Liverpool completed the top four. Manchester City had a huge drop in form and um, finished the season in sixth position. A year after that, and the final season here, Manchester United won third successive title. 91 points, which was five more than Manchester City. Arsenal and Chelsea completed the top four. I'm just very interested to see what happened in Manchester City. Massimiliano Allegri is now their new manager, which means that uh, Guardiola was probably sucked. Indeed, yes, he was sucked in the year 2020 after that uh, bad finish in sixth place. Not really surprising, to be honest. Now let's have a quick look at Manchester United and how their new signing Jean-Michel Seri performed. First of all, in the team overview screen, we can see that Mario Mandzukic is the new captain, which means that uh, they brought that player and uh, we'll have a look at the transfers uh, a bit later. First, let's have a look at the tactics screen, where we see that Matic is still playing for the team and Roberto Gallardini is in the middle of the field uh, along with him. The player has been brought from Milan, we'll see that in the transfer screen in a second. Pogba is here in the substitute, but I don't see Seri. Which is quite interesting. Before I before I look for him, let's have a quick look who else is here. We see Angel Correa is uh, has been brought. Kenny Tetti is here. We see uh, Westy Hutt is in the substitutes, and Sergio Roberto as well is in there. So uh, very very interesting. Let's have a quick look here. Where is uh, Jean Michel Seri? Is still in the team, but he has not played a lot this season. If we look at uh, his uh, history, we can see that uh, in the second season he played a lot. He played uh, 47 games in total, where he scored 8 goals, 2 penalties, uh, actually 1 penalty, 7 assists, 2 player of the match award, average rating 7.13, which is not bad, not bad at all, I would say. Then in the next season, however, his uh, appearances dropped significantly, and in the last season he did not play at all. 
Maybe it was an injury? No? No, it was not an injury, so apparently there are just better options in the team than him. And uh, he is not transferred, but he is listed. He is transfer listed and they're asking for significantly less than what they brought him for. Alright, so Jean-Michel Seri is apparently not a successful transfer at Manchester United. Now let's have a quick look at the transfer screen and see who did they bring in and uh, sold in those three and a half seasons. In the first season, of course, Jean-Michel Seri was the only transfer. Then the next year they brought Pepe from Besiktas and Mario Mandzukic from Juventus, their current captain. On the other side, outgoing transfers, Chris Molink was sold to Monaco, Daily Blind to Lyon, Matteo Dermian to Olympiacos. Milan Bars, a young uh, United uh, winger, was sold to Sunderland. Cameron Bortwick Jackson also joined him at Sunderland. And James Wilson was sold to West Bromwich Albion. In the third season, Federico Chiesa was brought from Fiorentina, Angel Correa from Juventus, Alex Teles from Porto, Kenny Tetti from Juventus, Jordan Kane from Middlesbrough. I'm not familiar with that player. He's a region, a midfielder, a central midfielder who has. Very good attributes, maybe uh, he needs uh, a sport development uh, in the next uh, year or two to become uh, a real good player, but he has all the basics to succeed. Mourinho also signed Pedro on a free transfer. This is Pedro which, who played for Chelsea, of course. He is now a manager, so he has retired in the meantime. Cesar Montes from Monterrey. I'm not familiar with that player, a central defender. And Bernardo from Borussia Mönchengladbach. In the outgoing section, Sergio Romero has been sold to Atalanta and Joel Pereira has been sold to Nottingham Forest. Okay, and in the last season, the transfers, the incoming transfers were, were Wesley Hewitt from Southampton, Leonardo Spinazzola from Sporting Club de Portugal. Let's see that player. A left fullback who is also capable to play on the right. He is a player that initially was in Atalanta, then played in Portugal, and Jose Mourinho brought him to England. The rest of the transfers were Sergio Roberto for staggering £75 million from Barcelona, Roberto Gallardini from Inter and Nikola Ratkovic from Partizan. Nikola Ratkovic is another region who is uh, playing as an attacking midfielder, also equally capable to play as a central midfielder and a striker. He has very good attributes for an 18, year, 18 years old and will probably develop into quite a good player. In the outgoing section Antonio Valencia was sold to Leverkusen. And Scott McTominay was sold to Birmingham. So not a lot of outgoing transfers, but Mourinho really reinforced his team with a lot of incoming transfers. Now looking at the cup competitions in England, we can see that the FA Cup was won twice by Manchester United in this experiment in season 2017-18 and uh, the next season as well, 2018-19. Afterwards, in the last two years, the, this trophy went to London for Arsenal and Chelsea respectively. Let's have a quick look at the League Cup as well. The League Cup was also won twice by Manchester United. In the first season, uh, the trophy went to Stoke, but then afterwards, season 2018-19 and 19-20, the title was uh, for the Red Devils. In the final season, uh, now West Ham were victorious in the final against Preston. So this is a very interesting turn of events. Preston managed to compete in the League Cup final. Now switching our attention to the European competitions and first in line of course is the Europa League where Arsenal won the first title here in season 2017-18 after defeating Athletic Bilbao in the final 2-0. Arsenal qualified for that final after defeating Milan, Zenit St. Petersburg and the Spanish Real Sociedad on their way to the final. In the season after that Manchester United challenged for the Europa League in the final but lost to Lazio. Lazio won 1-0 after defeating English Burnley on away goals in the semi-final their uh, Rome uh, neighbors Roma 4-2 in the quarterfinal and uh, Frankfurt in the second knockout round. On the other hand, Manchester United qualified after defeating Liverpool in the semi-final, Athletic Bilbao in the quarters and Portuguese Porto in the second knockout round. In the third season, Tottenham won the Europa League on penalties after defeating Barcelona in the final. They qualified for that game after beating Leverkusen in the semi, Zenit in the quarterfinals and Sporting Club de Portugal in the second knockout round. In the final season, Athletic Bilbao were victorious on penalties against Inter in a game that was played at Allianz Stadium. 
Athletic Bilbao also eliminated Bayern Munich. Uh, that was uh, quite unfortunate for them. If Bayern qualified, they would have played the game at their home stadium, but it was not meant to be, I guess. Athletic Bilbao also eliminated Spanish compatriots Villarreal on away goals in the quarterfinals and the Dutch team Ajax with a staggering 6-0 on aggregate in the second knockout round. Moving one tier up to the Champions League, Real Madrid won the first, uh, the first competition here against Juventus 1-0 which makes it 3 in a row for the uh, Los Blancos from Madrid. They qualified for that game after defeating Manchester United in the semi-final. Before that, Barcelona in the quarters and Spartak Moscow in the first knockout round. Year after that, Atletico Madrid won the trophy uh, on penalties after defeating Barcelona in the final uh, after 1-1 in regular time. They also defeated Tottenham 3-2 in the semi-final, Manchester City in the quarter-final and Shakhtar Donetsk in the first knockout round. Then in the third season, Manchester United were victorious and won the most important European competition after penalties and 2-2 in regular time against Real Madrid. They also eliminated Napoli in the semi-final, Borussia Dortmund in the quarter-final and Bayern Munich in the first knockout round. Finally, the final season here, Chelsea were victorious after defeating Barcelona uh, in the final. Barcelona lost uh, two finals in a row, apparently. Let me just have a quick look. I, no, I'm mistaken, of course, last final was against Real Madrid. But anyway, Chelsea beat them 3-1 in this final that was played at uh, Amsterdam Arena. And uh, Chelsea also defeated Manchester United in the semi-finals, Napoli in the quarters and Borussia Dortmund in the first knockout round. One last thing I want to have a look at before I finish this experiment is the Ballon d'Or awards. So as you can see Neymar won the award in 2018, Lionel Messi was second place and Ronaldo third place. Then in the next year Paolo Dybala, Dybala won the award, Neymar second place, Messi third. And in the final year Neymar won the award again. Mbappé was second place with Paulo Dybala in third place. With that, this is the end of the experiment. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for my channel if you haven't already, that way you're going to receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. In the meantime, you can also check out my social media, links will be provided in the description below. Let me know what do you guys think about this experiment and what would you like to see next. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Once again, thank you for watching, until the next time, bye!